Gorgeous night again here in Miami. Cuban Heritage Night tonight at the ballpark. The Arizona Diamondbacks are here for a three-game series. The Diamondbacks are 23 and 18. They're a game out in the West and on Cuban Heritage Night. Levi and Jose Fernandez is out there. Pedro Ramirez, the Hall of Famer. Everybody getting into it. A lot of Cuban flavor here at the ballpark tonight to start this three-game series. Even Billy has got the hat going. Hi, everyone. Rich Waltz, my partner, Tommy Hutton, all geeked up on cafecitos. Yeah, just a couple of cafe con leches. And we also saw Tony Taylor in that shot, too, an old teammate, a great guy. Well, the Marlins face a Diamondbacks team that's playing quite well. They took two or three from Arizona. They're just a game behind San Francisco in the West. They've retooled a bit. And the guy that will try to, to get to them is... Kevin Slowey. It's an interesting matchup. Neither of these starting pitchers have a lot of run support. Let's start with Slowey. Yeah, Kevin Slowey coming off a start where he wasn't the Kevin Slowey that we had seen in his previous outings, but his ERA is still at a nice 2.55. 11 walks, 36 strikeouts. Since 2007, only Cliff Lee, Roy Halladay, and Dan Heron have a better strikeouts to walks ratio. So tonight, Kevin Slowey trying to rebound from a poor outing that he had in L.A. Trevor Cahill has pitched very well over his last three starts, but the Diamondbacks don't seem to be scoring him many runs. Sixth lowest run support in the National League. A little different pitcher than Slowey. Relies a little more on that sinker. Yeah, he's a, a pretty good two-seam guy with a, a good sinker is Trevor Cahill. 25 years old. You know, he was an all-star in Oakland in 2010, won 18 games. He's been spot on his last four starts. Last four starts, 25 innings. He's given up just five earned runs. So you see the numbers, two and four, good ERA. So two guys who haven't gotten a whole lot of support this year. One of the questions for Arizona coming into this year, how would they score runs? How would they hit homers without Justin Upton? When we get back, we got the answer. Paul Goldschmidt has been tearing it up in the desert, and he brings his act to Miami for the next three nights.
Arizona Diamondbacks. Paul Goldschmidt could really swing it. Just ask Jeff Conine. He's out with Craig Mittervini. All right, Rich, thank you very much, and happy Cuban Heritage Night here, everybody. First of three games against the Snakes, a good-looking club, and one of their big hitters signed a, a big deal in the offseason. A guy maybe not many people know about or know that he's this good is Paul Goldschmidt. Well, a couple weeks ago we did a uh, Who's Under the Radar segment here on the pregame show, and Goldschmidt was one of those guys that we had on uh, the program. And, you know, he's kind of been overlooked out there in Arizona, and you see the numbers that he's compiling so far this year. This guy's a big guy, six foot four, 225 pound first baseman, and the numbers he's compiling have been very impressive. He's the only player in the National League to have 10 plus doubles and 10 plus home runs, wow. leading in uh, extra base hits with 21. Total bases, number one, runs batted in, number three, home runs, number three, on base percentage third in the league slugging percentage fourth in the league just a very impressive uh, resume so far for this young first baseman look at the average on the road especially you know arizona's a very good hitting ballpark he's hitting 272 there which is respectable but 385 on the road uh he's compiling an all-star type season they're hitting only 223 with runners in scoring position just a few points better than the marlins but they slug and with a guy like a quick bat like goldschmidt you got cody ross on fire again that's a pretty good team yeah, they can score a lot of runs in a hurry, and that's what they've been doing. That's why they're doing so well. Uh, one game out of the National League East uh, behind the San Francisco Giants. You know, Kirk Gibson's got a pretty uh, all-star staff over there, and they, they've, they've taught these guys well. They play a very sound game. You watch them during this series. Those little things, Arizona seems to do them all the time, and one of them is sound defense, and they pitch about as good as anybody, too, a 3-4-9 team ERA. All right, we're ready to go. It's the Fish and the Snakes. Rich and Tommy are next. In Miami tonight, the Arizona Diamondbacks have arrived for a three-game weekend series. And on this perfect Friday night, the Fish will send Kevin Slowey out to the mound. And he will take on the Diamondbacks. 
who will come to the plate in this order. Gerardo Parra is in right field. D.D. Gregorius at short. Paul Goldschmidt's at first. Eric Chavez at third base. Our old friend, Cody Ross in left field. Miguel Montero, the catcher. Our team proud of the former Brave is at second. A.J. Pollock, a uh, top prospect for the Diamondbacks, is in center. And Trevor Cahill is on the mound. And there is Kevin Slowey. Slowey at 29, a renaissance of sorts for him. You see his ERA through eight starts, a 2.55. And the Diamondbacks come in, a game back in the West. They have played well under Kirk Gibson. They're at 23 and 18. Pitch a penny brings you the first pitch. Slowey goes to work. With Rob Brantley behind the plate and a fastball that misses low and outside. Rodrigo Parra leading it off. To show you how out of whack Kevin Slowey was in that ball game against the Dodgers. It was only the fourth time in his career that he had more walks in a game than strikeouts. So he's trying to rebound from that seven to one loss at Dodger Stadium. In the air and out of play for two years Slowey Got the least amount of run support. In Major League Baseball. And of course. A couple of starts ago. The Marlins put 14 runs on the board. And that of course was his win. And a masterpiece of a game before that Dodger start. It was in Philly, seven innings, two hits, no runs, and seven strikeouts. Parra pokes that one foul and out of play. Gerardo Parra is having a nice year, a 319 average, 13 doubles already. And he's close to 400 over his last 10 games. This is a guy that has always been a terrific outfielder. And he smacks that one in the gap, left center field. Racing for Ruggiano. Par around first, headed for second. Ruggiano's throw, and he is safe. Dietrich with the tag. And a double by Par, 14 doubles on the season. Sometimes a player, maybe coming from a smaller ballpark, wouldn't think of two on this, but because the Diamondbacks play in a big yard, boy, he got him right on the hand. He's out. Watch the tag. He tries to sneak around and get the bag with his hand, but the tag, the glove is right on the hand. How could he miss that? He's looking right at it. That's Brian Onora, the second base umpire. He's looking right at it. But anyway, power, because he plays in the big park, he knows that here at Marlins Park, any ball in the gap, you have a chance to stretch it into an extra base. T.D. Gregorius now. Trying to bunt, pops a foul along the screen. Gregorius, as we talked about, coming over from the Reds organization, has always been talked about as one of the top defensive shortstops in the minor leagues as he was coming up. And that three-way deal with the Reds, the Diamondbacks, and Cleveland, he has arrived in Arizona, has hit quite well. I think he's surprised a lot of people with that 348 average, which is tops among all major league rookies. Out of Curacao, and he's only 23. He was actually born in the Netherlands and then ended up in Curacao. So he probably, as uh, most of the kids do from down there, speaks four or five languages. That's right. French, Dutch, Spanish, English, Papiamento. They cover it all. Gets into that one, but he pulled it. And it's into the corner, foul, just barely. So the Diamondbacks have had some good swings already against Slowey. Well, let's see what the Marlins defense looks like tonight. The outfield with Pierre Ruggiano and Marcelo Zuna. Left side of the infield, Polanco's made one error. Echeverria has made one error. They've been solid all year. Dietrich and Dobbs and Brantley behind the plate. Slowey, one two pitch coming. Fastball jammed him, and Gregorius knocks it foul and out of play. The Diamondbacks last year were 81 and 81. That was third in the West. The struggles last year for Kirk Gibson's bunch were in close ball games. They were 12 under in one run games, and that was the last percentage wise in Major League Baseball. They scored a ton of runs last year. They were third 
in a run scored. And of course, two years ago, Gibson led him on an incredible run from worst to first, and they won the National League West with 94 wins. Yeah, that got Kirk Gibson, the National League Manager of the Year, in 2011. There is Gibby. And this group a little different, you know, Justin Upton always kind of been the centerpiece in Arizona, dealt in the offseason to the Braves. You got Gregorius out there at short. He adds a, some life. Parr is playing well. In the air, Echeverria on the outfield grass. And he makes the catch. Very nice off speed pitch to have Gregorius out in front. A good pitch by Kevin Slowey. Aaron Hill provided a lot of pop last year. He's on the disabled list. But the Diamondbacks have turned to this guy for power 11 doubles, 10 homers. He's driven in 31. He had the great series at Dodger Stadium last week where he hit four home runs in a sweep of the Dodgers. And his last two weeks, he's been sizzling. A 400 average, five homers, five doubles. First play in the National League to get to 10 home runs and 10 doubles. And I think the thing that's been most impressive is the work he's done on the road compared to at home. Adrian Johnson calling balls and strikes, fielding Colbreth at first. You've already met Brian Onora at second. Bill Welkies at third. Gerardo Parra doubled to open up this ball game. And now Goldschmidt with a count 0 and 2. Slowey's fastball. And it's fouled out of play. Boy, this is an area that Goldschmidt has really, really excelled in. He's excelled in the month of May, certainly, but with runners in scoring position, 438 this year. Seems like we said that the last three games with Chu and with Bottle. Now the Reds rolled through here, sweeping the Marlins. Cincinnati takes their show to Philly tonight. Goldschmidt, breaking ball, fly ball, left field. That one is way out of here. A hanging breaking ball, and Paul Goldschmidt punished it. A two run shot. Well, Kevin Slowey got ahead 0-2. He tried to sneak a fastball by him. He fouled it off. Then he came back with the curveball. It was a hanger. Look at it float and roll. Goldschmidt's eyes open up. And he hits that a long way. That's a Clevelander home run. And here is Eric Chavez, and he hits one down the line. That's deep, and that is gone. Back-to-back -back home runs, Goldschmidt and Chavez. And the Diamondbacks have come out swinging and have taken a 3-0 lead. Goodness. Boy, back-to-back -back no-doubters, too. And you talked about the struggles of Slowey in Los Angeles. It was control there. Here, he's having trouble keeping the ball in the ballpark. Chavez, no trouble keeping that ball fair. Guy having kind of a, a renaissance year is Eric Chavez, 35 years old. Chuck Hernandez watching Kevin Slowy. Cody Ross at the plate. And Ross with a fly ball. That's hit to right center field. That's hit well. Ruggiano should have room, does have room. Makes the catch. Out on the track. So a chance to, to say hello today before the ball game to Cody. He did not play last year with Boston here. He was hurt. And so his first chance to play a ball game here at Marlins Park. Yeah, he actually told us he, he was uh, hurt. Remember, he fouled the ball off his foot, had a broken bone. He said he fouled a pitch off his foot from Chad Qualls. <laughs> but just got under that one. So a long out for the second out. 
And here is Miguel Montero. Montero, a solid catcher. Two years removed from the National League All-Star team. Struggling to get going at the plate. He's 0 for his last 12. His average has dipped below 200. Two and zero. Oh. Arizona's won two straight, both coming over Atlanta. And now Slowey misses down low. It's three and zero. Oh. Two of those pitches, the second and the third, borderline. So the off-speed stuff giving Kevin Slowey a little trouble. You saw that rolling curveball that Goldschmidt hit. Chavez hit what looked like a changeup about 83 84 miles an hour. Letter high strike. Montero thought it was up. Slowly goes right back there and gets a soft fly ball to the left. Nothing soft. About the Diamondbacks in the first. Paul Goldschmidt puts one up in the blue seats above the Clevelander. And then Eric Chavez pumps one out of here. Back to back go the Diamondbacks for a 3 0 lead. Nothing deficit. Paul Goldschmidt first. The man on the right, a two run homer, and then Eric Chavez, a solo shot. So here come the fish Juan Pierre, Adani Echeverria, and Derek Dietrich, Marcelo Zuna, Justin Ruggiano, and Greg Dobbs, Placido Polanco, Rob Brantley, and Kevin Slowey. They'll be facing a guy that, as Tommy's pointed out, has pitched real well and doesn't have a lot to show for it in terms of wins and losses. Well, I tell you what, an ERA at 2.70, uh, they, they've averaged, the Diamondbacks have averaged 2.8 runs a game for him. So uh, he just hasn't gotten support. Good sinker, good changeup. Moves the ball around both sides of the plate, not overpowering. Pierre opened the Marlins first last night. Well, the home run to right, only his 18th career homer. And Cahill misses outside. You see the career number against the Diamondbacks. Of course, Pierre played in that NL West for three seasons with the Los Angeles Dodgers. A lot of ABs in his career against Arizona. Had some good success. Cahill is still only 25. That's because he was a, a high schooler taken out of Oceanside, California, just north of San Diego. 
Spent three years in the big leagues with Oakland. And an all-star season back in 2010, but he walks Pierre, who's aboard. Here comes Echeverria. Now, the Diamondbacks are terrific defensively, best of the National League, just 12 errors. That's amazing. They've committed just 12 errors. You, you know Cody Ross, what he can do. A.J. Pollock, they say, has done a nice job in center. Gerardo Parra, the gold glover in right field. Eric Chavez, he's won six gold. D.D. Gregorius, Prado, and Goldschmidt. And Miguel Montero behind the plate. Echeverria takes a strike. Of course, Echeverria last night, he and Marcelo Zuna teaming up in the ninth with triples. Echeverria's triple knocked Matt Latos out of the ball game, and Marcelo Zuna's triple against Aroldis Chapman tied the game. The Marlins came back to tie the Reds, but then would lose to them in 10 innings. And that's where we've seen Echeverria get four of his five triples in that gap in right center field. A swing and Echeverria goes down. It counts one and two. On his Cuban Heritage Night, of course, Echeverria from Cuba. Ow. Echeverria defected in 2009 to Mexico. And he swings and misses at a breaking ball. And Echeverria now number one. Dietrich. Of course, every time Derek Dietrich starts a series against the team, more often than not, it's somebody that he hasn't seen, and they certainly haven't seen him. Dietrich opening his big league career with a five-game hit streak that was snapped last night. He went 0 for 2 and was hit by a pitch. Dietrich, the 23-year-old. Facing Trevor Cahill, Juan Pierre's at first. Check swing, no swing. That's Bill Welke. It looked like a change up from Cahill. Sometimes when you're a, a young hitter, actually any hitter, when you see a, a pitcher for the first time, you'd like to see a little bit of everything. So Dietrich has seen the change up. You can hear the Pachanga band going on here on a Cuban Heritage Night. I think they've had a little Cuban coffee too. Pierre is running, swing in a miss. Did he foul tip it? The ball wasn't held by the catcher. It almost sounded like it was tipped, but Montero couldn't hold it. And Pierre is going to get the bag. It's a stolen base for Pierre. It's 13th. Let's take a look in super slow mo. See if Dietrich got a piece of this changeup. Yeah, look at the grip on the changeup. He kind of turns it over. Nope. He flat out missed it. That sound was the ball off the plate. Two and two. Whatever gets the job done, Tommy, from the percussion section. Here away from second. Two two coming to Dietrich. Cahill came across the plate and missed in. See how much confidence he has in that changeup. He's thrown it a couple of times, and you you can't look for changeup three and two. But don't be surprised if he uses it. In the dirt, and he lost him. So Dietrich ends up at first.
Trevor Cahill getting a visit from his catcher, Miguel Montero. Gives us a chance to give you a little scouting report on him. We told you some of his stuff. Two seamers. We've seen the change up. He was an all-star. He won 18 games for the A's in 2010. He's a ground ball pitcher. A lot of times sinker ball guys, ground ball guys are very quick to first base with good moves and he was a, a former terrific high school shortstop, so he has a good move to first. Now Marcel Ozuna. Hits have been tough to come by lately for Ozuna. That triple last night. There's a strike. Ozuna one for ten in the series before that triple. And of course that tied the ball game up here with Dietrich and Pierre at first and second one out three nothing Diamondbacks Arizona getting a two run shot from who else Paul Goldschmidt and a solo shot on the next pitch from Eric Chavez. And an opportunity for Miami in a season where runs have been tough to get. And you get in that situation too, Rich, where you've got the early guys in the lineup on base, and now you have your your productive hitters that are up there. So that's what you hope for. Here's the 0-2. Ozuna into left field, the base hit. Pierre will be stopped there. You've got a good arm in left. This is a very good outfield with Ross in left, Pollock in center, and Para in right field and so the bags are loaded for Ruggiano. Nicely done by well he got the change up not afraid to throw that change up to right handers. Ozuna stayed back on it found that hole but you're right. Cody Ross can play all three spots. Joe Espada knows that. He also knows the way Cody Ross charges the ball which he did very well there. So here's Ruggiano and here's where Trevor Cahill has been at his very best this year. He leads all pitchers in baseball with opponents average with runners in scoring position. Ruggiano pulls it foul. Hitters are hitting 070 with runners in scoring position this year against that man. That's incredible and he, he probably likes to use that two seamer in this situation. He'd love to get a double play ball and on the other hand Ruggiano would like to drive a ball in a gap. It's down and it's one and one. Pierre open with a walk and a stolen base after Echeverria struck out. Dietrich, who's at second, walked. Ozuna singled the left. And a real opportunity here to put a dent in this 3 0 lead. Ruggiano, a bouncer to third. Chavez gets one. The turn to first in time. And the Diamondbacks get out of the inning and once again Trevor Cahill with runners in scoring position the best in Major League Baseball.
is in high definition. It's brought to you by H. H. Gregg. A lively, albeit very frustrating, start to this ball game for Miami. Well, it was last night, too. Uh, Jeff Mathis hit into a 5-4-3 double play with bases loaded and one out. And that really stings coming off a three-run Diamondback first with homers by Goldschmidt and Chavez. Martin Prado, A.J. Pollock, and Trevor Cahill in the second for the Snakes. Prado, of course, such a versatile, valuable player. Lines it into right field, and it's caught there by Ozuna. Talked to Don Baylor, the hitting coach of the Diamondbacks. And he said Prado may be hitting 235, but he's hit line drives at people all season long. Well, the other thing, in 75 career games against the uh, Marlins, Martin Prado has hit 316. Here's Don Baylor, an MVP, who knows a little bit about hitting, knows a little bit about managing, knows a little bit about this game. Here's Pollock now. A.J. Pollock. 25. He is a Golden Domer. Two-time MVP at Notre Dame. And the 17th overall pick in the 2007 draft. He's out of Connecticut. He's just 25. And everywhere he went, all the way up the ladder, he seemed to be winning awards. MVP of the AAA All-Star Game. MVP of the Pacific Coast League postseason. MVP of the AAA championship game. And he flies out to center to Ruggiano. So two outs for Slowey. Marlins have a three-game series against the Phillies. Thus the cheesesteak visual. And on Monday night, you can get all that you can eat for just $22 on Outback Steakhouse, South Florida Heroes Monday. All military, veteran, police, firefighters, and first responders can receive free tickets to the game. Go to Marlins.com for more information. So far, a nice comeback inning for Kevin Slowey. Got the first two hitters out. Now he can have a 1-2-3 inning facing Cahill here. Cahill swings and misses. Slowey's out in front 0-2. Outside corner, down goes Cahill. The Diamondbacks put up three in the first, and to the bottom of the second, Miami trailing three nothing. Toyota, let's go places by AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability at 1 800 pick AT&T. Rethink possible by Just for Men Auto Stop, the foolproof way to get rid of gray. And by Checkers, be star. Cuban Heritage Night tonight at Marlins Park. 
lot of Cuban players here tonight on the field and off the field. Hit leaders for Cuban-born players, Rafael Palmero, Tony Perez, Campy Campaneris, Tony Taylor here, Vinny Minoso. Yeah, how about the two of those five in the house tonight, Tony Perez, Tony Taylor. Always good to see the Hall of Famer, Tony Perez, and we don't get a chance to see Tony Taylor as often, but it was great to see him tonight, too. Greg Dobbs leads it off, and Dobbs hey. takes a strike. Boy, the Marlins, who gave up a three spot in the first, promptly loaded the bases with one out. Justin Ruggiano bounced into a 5-4-3 double play, and Dobbs shoots one into left field. He has a base hit to open up the second. So the leadoff man is aboard. This copyright telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Lacido Polanco. Cahill's ERA at 2.70. And Tommy talked about how impressive he's been this year without a lot of wins, just a couple of them. That's been one of the keys for the Diamondbacks this year. They've pitched quite well, and that's not easy to do in a very hitter friendly ballpark in Arizona. The Diamondbacks team ERA is fifth in the National League. 3.49. Swing and a miss and a throw down, not in time. But Polanco strikes out. So there's one out, and here comes Rob Brantley, a very good catcher back there, Miguel Montero. And he'll throw much like any Molina, any base, any time, and usually on target. Boy, just the 11th time that Polanco struck out this year 11 strikeouts, 10 walks. Cahill is one of those guys, Rich, he, he's been a pretty good pitcher. 55 career wins. Talked about his 18 win season in 2010 when he was an all star with the A's. It's Diamondbacks rotation. There's some pretty good arms in it. Brantley's shot speared there on a hot Prado to Gregorius, who bare hands and turns it. Very good up the middle with that pair. And Miami is hit into two double plays in two innings.
A little local flavor for you on Cuban Heritage Night. AT&T U-verse Twitter poll. Favorite sandwich, the media noche or the Cuban sandwich? Hashtag before each. Very nice presentation. That's a favorite stop among the crack staff as they get to the ballpark. Oftentimes they run into that gentleman. Kevin Slowey to work. Top of the order. Dobbs with a spinning stop. Slowey is there. And Gerardo Parra is out number one. Boy, seeing some terrific defense. And you talk about this often. You see good defense a lot of times when pitchers work quickly. And both Cahill and Slowey. Slowey threw eight pitches last inning. Cahill threw six. Well, Slowey worked quickly in the first, and so did the Diamondbacks. Paul Goldschmidt, a two run homer. Eric Chavez on the next pitch. A solo shot to right. And in the blink of an eye, the Diamondbacks had a 3 0 lead. And here is Gregorius. A strike to DD. Slowly right back in there. 0 oh 2. Mets beat the Cubs, and Harvey is now 5 and 0. Starter for the Mets. Yeah, no walks, six strikeouts in his uh, seven in the third innings at Wrigley Field today. Up the middle and through Slowey, Gregorius has his first hit. But by the way, Harvey. Had the game winning single too. Drove in the <laughs> winning run. So not a bad day. The Mets improved to 16 and 23. Now here is Goldschmidt. One of the things you really have to respect about this guy is he was not a first round bonus selection. A guy that signed for a big contract was much heralded and all of that. Eighth round pick back in 2009 out of Texas State. He's from Houston. Once he got in the system, he didn't stay there long. He played just 315 games in the minors. He had a 620 slugging percentage coming up in the minor leagues. That's how you move up quickly in an organization. Diamondbacks Triple A team. Plays at altitude in Reno, which is a great place to hit. And so you never know how those numbers translate. But Goldschmidt, last year 20 homers. You can see both those pitches borderline for Slowey, both going Goldschmidt's way. Well, with Goldschmidt's home run in the first inning. He's 11th on the year, but he's eighth on the road. That's the most road home runs in the National League. And so while the Diamondbacks arrive with a two game win streak at 23 and 18. Miami has slipped to 11 and 30 have dropped four in a row and eight of their last nine. Two and two. The 2 2 pitch. Fouled out of play. Actually, five in a row Miami has dropped after the sweep at the hands of the Reds and that Sunday loss in Los Angeles. Yeah, losing Saturday and Sunday in LA. Of course, a Friday night win in LA, but the three game sweep in San Diego as well. At the hands of the Padres, Slowey 
missing here in the can't, uh, count at three and two. You would expect Gregorius to be on the move. Yeah, Goldschmidt now with 33 runs driven in. You see Chavez on deck. Chavez homeward, as did Goldschmidt back in the first. Gregorius is running. Goldschmidt fouls it back and out of play. You know, the thing, Rich, that you hear in, in both of us having conversation with Diamondbacks uh, coaches and, and broadcasters is the hard work that Goldschmidt puts in. He's a student of the game. He puts in his time. He works hard. And it's translated into success. Gregorius runs. Goldschmidt swings and fouls it. And his emergence has made it uh, a little easier on the Diamondbacks in terms of the power numbers and production numbers and trading Justin Upton. Although Upton is having a terrific year, 13 home runs. Goldschmidt is two behind him with 11. And with 33 RBIs, is ahead of Upton in that category. Another foul ball. This time Gregorius was not running. So familiar names on the disabled list. JJ puts. The versatile Willie Bloomquist have been seeing a lot of time at shortstop. We told you about Aaron Hill and another good young outfielder Adam Eaton is on the DL. Gregorius runs and. Pitch number 10 ends up in the seats as well. well. That's one of the reasons, too. They felt they could trade Justin Upton with Eaton uh, signing Cody Ross. Jason Kubel, who had a very solid year last year. So they felt they, they had plenty of outfielders. That's why they made that deal. Another foul ball, and I think power-wise, with Aaron Hill coming back and Hill right now on the disabled list. Remember Hill popped 26 home runs last year. For the Diamondbacks. This is a terrific staff and we were we've been talking about if you could have a. A, a matchup between coaching staffs. This would be a real tough one to beat. Because you got guys who are all stars multiple times. There's three different MVPs in that dugout. I mean, you start with Kirk Gibson. Gibson was the National League MVP in 1988. The man to his right, Alan Trammell, was the American League MVP as a Tiger. And then we've seen Don Baylor. He was an American League MVP as well. Yeah, I think I totaled it up 20 All Star games. And that guy may have had a, <laughs> as good a career as any five All Stars, four gold gloves. That's Matt Williams. That's another blast. Left field and deep. Pierre at the track. It's gone. Paul Goldschmidt again. Another two run shot. He wrecked the Dodgers last week. He's tearing apart the Marlins tonight. 13th pitch that he saw from Kevin Slowey. He fouled off eight consecutive pitches. Finally got a fastball. Remember the other home run was a hanging curveball. This was a belt high fastball. And to Goldschmidt's credit, he fouled off so many pitches. He finally got one to his liking. Wow. He's hit a, a pair of balls into the Cleveland or look at the pitch tracks. Slowly never threw anything right down the middle. And Goldschmidt. We told you he was hot coming in. He's even hotter now. His last 15 games, including this one, seven homers. Four were against the Dodgers, and two are here tonight in game one against Miami. Well, he's driven in four of their five runs. 
but the whole key to that at bat for Goldschmidt is that he fouled off so many pitches. Eric Chavez. You said the word renaissance with Chavez and that's certainly true. Chavez. And so far the Diamondbacks getting a lot of time out of him, and I think that's the biggest question is how many games can he play how much does he have left in the tank at 35. It's been such an injury filled career. He's not had a season of over 300 at bats since 2007. But he's got two hits tonight a home run. And a single there. Well they know as well as anybody and Kirk Gibson certainly knows that they have to really be careful how they play him. Probably play him three or four days a week. He needs to sit a couple of days. So they can keep him healthy all year. Very interesting story with Eric Chavez and Marlins third base coach Joe Espada. He was talking to Joe Espada and the year that Joe was drafted. Joe was drafted in the second round by the Oakland A's. The same year Eric Chavez was their first round pick. So the two of them in 97 and 98 played on the same team in the uh, in the minor leagues coming up in the A's system. Of course Joe said you know how it turned out Eric Chavez was a terrific player. And he said he hadn't seen him in quite some time so he was looking forward to, to chatting with him a little bit. Especially Joe over third base and Chavez playing third. And Chavez has won six gold gloves. He's at first. And here is Cody Ross. Since Cody left the Marlins, a lot of great things have happened in his career. Of course, that magical run in San Francisco, that was the year that he was claimed off waivers from the Marlins. He went to the Giants and really lit it up in the postseason. And didn't really get hot to the very, very end of the year. Five postseason home runs. He was the National League Championship Series MVP. He drove in 10 runs in that World Championship postseason for the Giants. Had a another year with the Giants in 2011. Didn't have the greatest of years. 240 hit 14 home runs, but he bounced back last year with a very solid year for Boston. 34 doubles, 22 homers, 81 RBIs, and as Marlin fans know, terrific defense. Outstanding competitor. Plays hurt. Plays hard. He missed the uh, early part of this year uh, with a calf strain. But yeah, a couple of years, 22 home runs in 08 as a Marlin, 24 home runs in 09. And as the crack staff points out, he can also pitch. That's right. <laughs> we'll have that tomorrow. That's that's good because you never want to break it all out the first game. Polanco, a dive. Dietrich's turn. That almost was a spectacular double play. Started out by Polanco. Watch on this replay. How did Polanco get the throw off yeah, the second? He kind of bounces off his knees. Watch this. <laughs> That's incredible. And then the strong turn, which we've seen by Dietrich and his strong throwing arm. But the incredible thing of that is how Polanco got the throw off and, and even made it close. It was a perfect feed. Well, we talked about the left side of the Marlins infield. The defense on a whole hasn't been great. But Polanco has made one error. Echeverria has made one error. So that left side's only made two errors. Polanco needed the extendo gizmo that many of you golfers carry in your bag. Just a, an extra six or seven feet. Now of all the Diamondbacks players that are having good years swinging the bat well there's a guy that's uh, really had his struggles lately and a, a guy who is a very solid hitter over his last 13 now.
Ross at first. 1 1. Now slowly. And this is. Obviously just the top of the third. But you see the pitch count on the screen as well 65 pitches for slowly. He's given up three homers. Two to Paul Goldschmidt. Both two run shots. And a solo homer. To Eric Chavez. Just haven't seen and you think about the last two starts. For Kevin slowly. He has to have the pinpoint control and we haven't seen the command. The last two outings 32 pitches this inning. And he loses a guy who's over his last 13 and hitting about 180. Well there's the, the contrast the game in the middle was that Jim in Philly and his last start on top against the Dodgers. And the trend coming out of that Dodger game has continued here he's given up five runs in two and two thirds and Miami's bullpen is about to get going. Here's Prado now Prado hit a screaming liner out to right for an out. I think anyone who is a Marlin fan has extreme respect for Prado having watched him play and play so well for the Braves and play everywhere for the Braves. He was terrific at second he got moved out of there when they signed or they traded for Ugla off the base and it kicks into left field. Prado's got himself a hit. Ross is going to score. And the Diamondbacks have a 6 0 lead. So Prado's had some rotten luck. Gets a nice bounce, although I think that's probably by Polanco, anyways. Yeah, I don't think Polanco gets to it. And it seems like Prado sees Marlins uniforms and he perks up. He had been rich two for 36 with runners in scoring position before that base hit. So here's AJ Pollock. Pollock and 0 for 1, a fly ball out to center. 6 0 Diamondbacks already. Pollock got to the big leagues last year. For 31 games. Good speed very good. Outfielder. Listed in the offseason as the top prospect for the Diamondbacks. Has played a terrific center field this year for them too. Adam Eaton another guy who can play center field. Lifts a fly ball towards the line. Ozuna in the foul territory reaches. And he got it. Ozuna made the catch. Disappeared, emerged, had the ball. Marcelo Ozuna. It's a nice play.
Well, that uh, that looks like food cam. It's one of the new innovations here at Fox Sports this year. And a little Cuban food for you. Now we'll see if Craig has rhythm. Yes, we are with uh, we're with Angel here and uh, Conga Coco Yay is here tonight. Now all you guys are from Cuba. From Cuba, yes. Live in Miami. I live here in Miami. Tell me about the band a little bit. What do we have? A lot of instruments here. A lot of Cuban percussion. You have a lot of instruments. How you see? And you guys play various parties. Whatever party, whatever events. We are ready for everything. They are on YouTube, guys. It's Congo Coco Lay at 786 252 6292. Tommy Rich, you can book your parties. Now, the instruments are interesting. Lucho, show me what you have here. Where, where, look at this instrument here. Where's that from? Car? The Q1, the old car, American old car, 50 something. That's the, the brake. Yeah. I have, uh, what do I have here? Another. You get the old cars, actually, you get better sound from. Of course. Right, so we're going to play something? Yeah. Go, man. Right, here we go. And what do I do? This one here? Yeah. All right. Now you got to be very careful. You don't want to hold it like this because you don't get the resonance, right? you got to hold it underneath. Okay. All right. Guys, you cannot play when, the, when we're in action. Is it after? Af okay. Now on a walk, we play? No. We, we can play after the... After the inning? After the people play. I guess we can't play right now. <laughs> They're playing the whole game, aren't they? All right. Craig, we need to be, right. you, need, you need to get bailed out by Bruce Dickinson, who would say you need more break drum. We're Kevin Slowey has walked. Juan Pierre is coming to the plate. And Danny Echevarria to follow. Which is uh, pretty incredible that Cahill, after going out there with a six-run lead, walked the pitcher. He was distracted by all that stuff going on in the seats. I think the whole confusion between break drum. He, he wanted more break drum. <laughs> Pierre walked back in the first. Miami's had opportunities. They're down big here, 6 nothing. But they've already bounced into two double plays in two innings. And Beer takes outside. <laughs> Trevor Cahill has not had a lot of run support this year. Tonight, though, six runs, and he can thank Paul Goldschmidt for four of those runs. Goldschmidt, a pair of two-run homers. Hey, you brought a point, Rich, just 25 years old. It seems like Cahill's been around a little bit, but still very young in his career. And he walks Pierre. That's the fourth walk that Cahill has issued. Tomorrow night, Marlins and Diamondbacks, 710. All the you can eat seats, just $27. Unlimited KM Beef Franks, Peanuts, Popcorn, Nachos, Pepsis, and Water. Stay after the game for a concert with Fat Man Scoop. Presented by Bacardi. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. Do you think Fat Man Scoop will have a break drum in his band? It's a good chance, yeah. Maybe a water pump. Fat man scoop, the former first baseman. Very nice. Thank you. You're not talking about Bob Hamlin, are you? <laughs> Hammer. <laughs> but Danny Echeverria now with Cahill out there. A couple of walks, and the Marlins are back in a spot where they've got runners at first and second, nobody out. They are in a 6 nothing hole, though. And Javaria pulls it on the ground. Chavez picks it and gets the out. Now, it may have looked like he was blindly stabbing for the ball. But Eric Chavez 
has always been known as one of the best defensive third basemen in the game. Six gold gloves. Yeah, I think he's second guessing himself, though. He had a chance to, to maybe get a double play if he initially picked the ball and went to second base. He thought he had a chance if he picked it, stepped on third, and went across the diamond, but he was a little bit too far away from the bag. Derek Dietrich now has walked. And he pulls one on the ground. Prado, Gregorius, bobbles it. Gets the out though. It came out on the exchange. And the Marlins nearly hit into their third double play. Yeah, a little trouble in the transition for Gregorius. He gets the out. Just can't quite make the throw, but alertly when he realized he didn't have a play at first, you notice how alertly he looked at third to see if Juan Pierre had taken a, a big turn. Marcelo Zuna, a base hit back in the first. At the corners, Dietrich and Pierre. And Ozuna rolls one to Gregorius in time to get the out. So the inning ends. Craig, all yours. With the Blanc out of the Marlins bullpen, he takes over for Kevin Slowey. We had a list of the great Cuban hitters. Here are the uh, terrific Cuban born pitchers. They had El Tiante at the top of the list, the crafty left hander, Mike Cuellar. We saw Levon Hernandez uh, throw out the uh, first pitch tonight. Levon, of course, played a little bit with Arizona as well, had a couple of years with the Diamondbacks. There he is. You know, he threw a strike, but 82 miles an hour is the way he pitched the last couple of years. <laughs> and at times effectively. If you notice with LeBlanc out there, remember, speaking of uh, Cuban born and Cuban heritage, slow he hit, he ended up walking. But because it's so early in the game, Mike Redmond, knowing that he was going to take slowly out of the game, didn't want to use up one of his pinch hitters. All right, in honor of Cuban Heritage Night tonight, we mic'd up Jose Fernandez during batting practice.
And I love it, I really do. I like this. Like chat and I don't know. That shit's fine. I need, to, I need to burn some energy because I got too much sometimes. Yeah, his teammates would attest to that. The greatest thing about uh, Jose being mic'd up today, of course, his teammates knew he was, and they, sometimes they stay away from that, but it didn't matter. He, he was just carrying on a conversation with himself as he shagged. <laughs> a lot of that on the postgame show after the ball game. That's some good stuff. That's a chance now for Wade LeBlanc to give the ball club a boost, give his manager some help, and try to get three or four innings. LeBlanc out of the rotation. Tom Kohler taking his spot. Kohler pitched well his first start in L.A. LeBlanc misses in. Yeah, Kohler gets the start tomorrow night. Brandon McCarthy for Arizona. That went into the seats. One and two. Diamondbacks have hit three home runs tonight. Paul Goldschmidt has moved into second in the National League. Behind his former teammate Justin Upton who started the night with 13. Pretty good swing right there by Parra. Stayed back, reached out. Decent breaking ball from LeBlanc. His second hit of the ball game. Parra's two for three. DD Gregorius coming up now. The line for Kevin Slowey in three innings, seven hits, three of them home runs, six runs, four coming on those home runs, a walk and a strikeout. Yeah, Kevin Slowey's ERA taking a big hit tonight. Started the game at 2.55 and the ERA now at 3.44. Well, you put the last two games back to back and his ERA. But he started in LA at 1.81. Yes. Gregorius takes down low. Yeah, the top uh, four hitters are seven for nine in the lineup. Para, Gregorius, Goldschmidt, and Chavez. Gregorius to center field. A lot of room out there. Ruggiano backs up to make the catch. So a couple outs and now LeBlanc will try to keep Paul Goldschmidt in the ballpark. Goldschmidt's first inning homer was a breaking ball that he launched way up into the blue seats above the Clevelander. His other two run homer came at the end of a 13 pitch at bat. And he drove it over the fence into the Clevelander. Now the Diamondbacks knew what they they had in Paul Goldschmidt signing him to a, a five year deal. So they blocked him in for a little bit. Hit sharply. Dietrich and Echeverria just got to the bag to beat Para. Six nothing Arizona.
by Honda. Visit your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel-efficient Honda. And by Kaiser University, now offering degrees in sports management. Learn more at kaiseruniversity.edu. Bottom of the fourth, all Diamondbacks. Paul Goldschmidt has hit a couple of homers. Eric Chavez is homer. Martin Prado has an RBI hit. And Trevor Cahill has kept Miami off the board with just two hits through three innings. And this was a key guy that he got to bounce into a double play back in the first with the bags loaded and one out. Back when it was only 3 0. Cahill is one of the best in the big leagues at getting ground ball outs. He's been feeding his infielders all night long. You know, the last four outs have been ground ball outs. Eight altogether in the game. And you do get credit for two on the double plays. Well, he's a smart guy. I mean, we talked about Cahill being a terrific high school shortstop. Vista High School in California graduated fifth in his class and he had committed to go to Dartmouth before he was drafted and signed by the A's. So you got to have a few smarts if you're going to go to Dartmouth. Second round draft pick by Oakland. I'm sure the money the A's flashed was enough to sway him away from that degree. The rotation that also includes uh, Ian Kennedy. That one misses in. Wade Miley, the lefty. The Marlins will see him on Sunday. Of course, McCarthy is tomorrow night. Patrick Corbin also in that rotation. Roller to first, Goldschmidt gets to first. And Dobbs is out number two. There's another ground ball out. Like the way Goldschmidt took that himself. And he had plenty of time. Yeah, I like to see a first baseman do that. Eliminates the pitcher having to get over there. I think he's pretty settled into that first base spot for a few years. <laughs> I think you're right. Here's Polanco. Owen one to Miami's third baseman. Polanco in the seventh spot. Struck out back in the second. Well, the other disturbing number we've talked about it the last couple of nights. It's kind of a good news, bad news weather thing. The weather's been so tremendous here in Miami. But the Marlins are 0 and 11 with the roof open this year. Well, at 11 and 30 right now, I think any <laughs> any stat, indoors, outdoors, roof open, roof closed, west coast, east coast, are not going to be pretty. Uh, pretty ugly. Six nothing. Diamondbacks after this sports injury prevention message from Cleveland Clinic, Florida.
Bucs opening here tonight. Miami trying to snap a five game losing streak. And so far Paul Goldschmidt laying waste to Marlins Park. Way LeBlanc into his second inning in relief. Eric Chavez also homer to the first. Back to back pitches Goldschmidt hit a two run shot. Chavez a solo shot and then Chavez. Lined one into right. For a base hit in the third he's two for two. And his bat is hot right now last dozen games. He's well over 400. You know you talked about uh, Chavez and how the last few years for him have been injury filled. He filled a nice role for the Yankees when he was there. 253 career home runs for Eric Chavez. He had a tremendous run as an athletic. From 2001 through 2005 he averaged 30 homers and 100 driven in. For those very good ball clubs and, and say what you those want. Those were the Giambi years right. Yeah, well I mean. Obviously they made a movie about money ball. And it was all about getting Scott Hatterberg, but I mean it was Chavez, it was Tejada, Tejada, it was Giambi, it was the big three. It was a very good team in Mulder, Oakland. Zito, and Hudson. Absolutely. Yeah, 13 years with the Oakland A's. Every once in a while you come. By a player, and, and we've talked about his career. You mentioned the average and all that that he had in the five year period. I was stunned. Eric Chavez has never been an all star. Well, there's a guy in a Diamondback uniform who had uh, a, a similar type career, in fact, was an MVP of the National League, and he never was an all star. He had 255 home runs. He had two of the biggest uh, postseason home runs, most dramatic postseason home runs. Chavez is at it again. That ball smoked down the line, and it's foul. Of course, we're talking about the uh, skipper of the Diamondbacks, Kirk Gibson, an MVP and never an All Star. That's pretty amazing, too. And the two home runs he hit. Remember the the visit by Dick Williams in '84 for the Padres. To Gossage on the mound. Goose Gossage, and then Sparky Anderson from the dugout. Egging Gibson on. Gibson hit one into the upper deck, and that essentially ended that series. And then, of course, uh, the injured Gibson in his only at bat in the 88 World Series for the Dodgers, coming off the trainer's table to get that backdoor slider with two strikes from Dennis Eckersley and hit it out for the game winner. That was his MVP season, that 1988 year. Everything Chavez hits is on a line. That one into right. And he leads off the fifth with a single. That might have been one of the original walk off pieces. <laughs> as, that, as that coined the phrase, stop just for men auto stop. Foolproof stat. Most games by a Cuban born player in Marlins history. Arrestus Pestrada at 192. Vladimir Nunez. Michael Tejera. Levon. 73. Etch. You got to think Echevarria within a couple years will be at the top of that list. Yeah, you have a good feeling he will be. Certainly love the way he plays short. Lately, he's had some good AB swinging the bat well. Three hits last night. Cody Ross, the pride of Carlsbad, New Mexico. Cody now 32. Five seasons, parts of five seasons. With the Marlins. And remember, he took a, a circuitous route here to Miami. Tiger draft pick, Dodger for a while, a Red for a few days, and then a Marlin. And really, it was as a Marlin that he got his first real opportunity to play. A little bit. Yes, he did. He joined the club in that 06 season, and with all those rookies running around, they had a heck of a time. Willingham, Ugla, Hanley Ramirez, 
Mike Jacobs. That one flipped down the line and out of play. Yeah, you got a couple of guys like Ugla and Cody Ross when they got hot. Change up swing, a foul tip. He got a piece of it. Now Ross thought he got a piece of it. No, I think he he came back. His bat came back and hit the glove. He didn't get a, a, a piece of it or foul tip. His swing, watch his swing, and it knocks the ball out of the glove. Not a foul foul ball. And the bat knocks it out of the glove. Why would he come back to the plate then? Because he he felt trying to it. sell him. <laughs> He's right. a smart player. He fooled me. He's a veteran. He <laughs> fooled me. Though it is a strikeout. And Montero pops one foul and out of play. There's a Diamondback organization, too. You look at him. 15 years of baseball for the Diamondbacks. They've been to six postseasons. Just a, a couple years removed from that National League West title in 2011. And of course, the 2001 World Champions. Ball on a strike. Montero not real pleased that he let that one go. Adrian Johnson doing a nice job of letting us know what the pitch is. If you're just tuning in and you're wondering what happened to Kevin Slowey, Paul Goldschmidt happened to Kevin Slowey. Goldschmidt, a pair of two run homers. And Slowey in three innings gave up six runs. LeBlanc, his second inning of work. Down the line, Pierre makes the catch, meets the wall, and hangs on. Marlins corner outfielders made a couple of nice plays. Marcelo Zuna made one right up against that uh, padded wall. Now that one did, did not hit the wall. The, the ball that Ozuna caught actually glanced off the wall, but it happened so quickly that to the naked eye for fielding Cobra at the first base umpire, he couldn't see it. Here's Prado. Watch this ball, the trajectory as it goes into his glove. It glance off the wall. You can even see the wall ripple. Yeah. But he sold it well. See, held it up. So what you're trying to say, Tommy, is if you can sell something. Yeah. It's what it is, and, and we talk about it in L.A. It's acting. I think they took his season tickets away. <laughs> I think they did. Uh. <laughs> I don't think John Lovitz is a season ticket holder anymore. Ozuna gathers it in and his throw cut. And Echeverria cut it. That I'm not sure that Polanco wanted that ball cut. Ozuna, another rocket throw. But Chavez going first to third. Prado with a hit. Well, as always, we know it was online. And he keeps it down. He keeps it on the plane where a cutoff man can cut it off. And just as we thought, Martin Prado came in here with a 235 batting average, but he's he's lined out, and then he's got two hits. He's two for three. Now 
Well, Don Baylor spoke truth. He just said his line drives are just finding gloves right now, and tonight he's hit three of them. Two have landed for hits. Was there a tougher guy in the game Boy. in the 70s than Don Baylor? Not that I can think of. Came up with Baltimore a year in Oakland. And then and was such a, a good team player, always found himself in postseason. Yes. Especially at the end of his yeah. career. Had a great run with the Angels. Groove was his nickname. He was a terrific high school football player in Texas, injured his shoulder. And had a very, very nice baseball career. As Tommy pointed out, 338 home runs. He stole 285 bases. That's the type of athlete that he was. And an American League MVP. And always led in getting hit by pitch. In fact, didn't Baylor hold the record before Biggio took it from him? I believe so. AJ Pollock battling at the plate with a count two and two. Pollock is 0 for 2, a couple fly ball outs. There's Chavez. Prado across the diamond. Been a long night for the fish who are in a, a tough stretch right now. A stretch that seen them lose five in a row and fall to 19 under. Yeah, it's a it's a stretch where for the most part the pitching has been pretty good and the the losses have been low scoring games. But sooner or later that catches up with you especially if the offense never catches up. Dietrich guns it over to first Pollock is out and the Diamondbacks lead two. Cuban Heritage Night, and uh, certainly a tip of the hat to one of the greatest, if not the greatest, when you look at his numbers, the only Hall of Famer born in Cuba, our pal Tony Perez, the special assistant to the president here with the Marlins, the former Marlin manager as well, and I know you have so much pride that you were born in Cuba, and to do all that you did, it kind of paved the way for a lot of other Cubans. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. This, it's a night to have a night like this here, and uh, you know, to remember all the Cubans, all the good players, uh, they came out from Cuba. You know, the people who live uh, here in South Florida, I mean, it's, 
it's nice to have a night like this and yeah. uh, the people remember you as a player and uh, what you did when you played. I never asked you this before, but was a dream to play in the major leagues even beyond your expectation as a youngster? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I never think about the big leagues because we, we used to, I, I grew up watching uh, the Winter League in Cuba when they play in Havana, but, you know, to I sign my first professional contract, I, I think about the big league. Yeah, I start thinking about it. All right, so Louis Tiant has got 229 wins, the most wins for any Cuban-born pitcher. Does he belong in the company of the Hall of Fame? Oh, yes, right. Yeah, Louis, Louis got a good record. He, uh, some pitchers, uh, they on the Hall of Fame uh, are there already, and, and Louis did a great job. He, uh, he was a great pitcher, and uh, he belonged in the Hall of Fame. All those RBIs you had, oh, what, over 1,700. How are we going to help these fish out, Tony? Well, we had to start hitting. We had to start getting the ball off the infield because we hit too many, too many double plays. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot for your insight. Thank you. The great Tony Perez, guys. Back to you. You know, two things we learned from that interview there, Tommy. Number one, Tony Perez, not only a, a great player, great guy, and uh, certainly proud of his Cuban heritage. Number two, Jeff Conine crushing the spread in the suite in the background. Now we know what uh, Niner does during the game before he gets out to the uh, center field set. You know, we thought that he was, uh, you know, in the press box charting pitches, watching replays. And he's crushing the spread. Yeah, but he is drinking a Diet Pepsi, which helps keep that sleek and athletic figure. <laughs> and that posture. That's true. The best posture on television. Like he, have a, he even has good posture when he's watching himself on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and right now he's he's trying to figure out what we're saying about him. <laughs> Very good choice in neckwear. Looking sharp. LeBlanc takes a change up down low. And out here in the bottom of the fifth. LeBlanc's first at bat. Six nothing Arizona. Chavez the ground ball outs keep mounting for Trevor Cahill in the second inning Cahill gave up a single then he struck out Polanco since that time the rest of the outs have all been ground ball outs ten in a row Wow the Duffy's deal from Duffy's sports grill you can catch a ride to the game for 40 bucks lower level ticket round trip motor coach transportation from Duffy's ten dollar Duffy's gift card. Next Duffy's deal game is Tuesday against the Phillies. Go to Marlins.com slash Duffy's. So Cahill feeding his infield plenty of ground balls. Pierre has walked twice. And did not swing but that's one of those balls. Be interested to see that on Fox tracks if it was a strike or not. Eh. Now the first one was the second one was borderline. It's fouled at the plate. The beginning of the game we talked about Cahill how in his last four starts each of those starts he'd given up two earned runs or less five earned runs all told in his last four starts. Pierre up the middle D.D. Gregorius makes the play and throws him out. Put another ground ball out on your score sheet there, partner. 6 0 Arizona.
Paul Goldschmidt, a couple home runs. Eric Chavez, a solo homer. And Arizona, off to a racing start in the first, has not looked back. And that's why that guy is smiling. Trevor Cahill has run support, something he'd not received a whole lot of this year. And the Diamondbacks have a 6 0 lead. Rich Waltz, Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini. The crack staff is here, and the Marlins are in a six run hole right now. At the start of the sixth inning, Cahill, Gerardo Parra, and D.D. Gregorius. Into the bat roller, Dietrich diving on his feet, makes the play. Well, I tell you, well, I a couple of things I like about that. Number one, uh, just great reactions and a terrific play. Number two, he did not panic because he knew Cahill hit the ball, the pitcher. Okay, don't panic. Had time, straightened himself, and a strong throw, and had lots of time to get Cahill. Faster runner, you got to approach this a little differently. Here's Para now. He opened the the party for Arizona with a double back in that first inning. Has also singled. Third inning for Wade LeBlanc. And so far, LeBlanc has done. Uh, what his manager wanted. He's uh, given him some innings. He hasn't allowed any more runs. The French Canadian guys emailed me and they were on me. I'm surprised they didn't get to you. Is that part of our French Canadian crack staff? Yes. Or, or are they want to be crack staffers? Well, they're, they're sort of Cajun crack staffers. Liner to left. And Gerardo Parra. You know, the, one of the knocks against Parra has always been he hasn't been the the great offensive player to get in there. He's such a terrific defender, but he's always been a real solid guy, never lighting it up. But this year, he's off to a, a very nice start. The Fan Express is back, and look at that, Tommy. It's a VIP party for 50 people that picks you up and takes you right to Marlins Park for a game. Find out how you and your friends can reserve. The bus, contact Marlins Group Sales and ask about the fan. Express Leblanc out there. Echeverria out there. And a 163 double play ends. The top of the sixth. Six nothing. Diamondbacks. The freeze cam is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Lights. Well, what do you want to freeze on Paul Goldschmidt? There's the first home run. There's the second home run. Let's freeze them both. 
Well, I tell you what, you can freeze. They're both up and out over the plate. A curveball, changeup, belt high on the changeup, curveball. Didn't have that sharp spin or bite. And when you do that to a hot hitter who has power, that's exactly what happens. What a start he's had to this season. How about the, the two first basemen we've seen in back-to-back -back series between Joey Votto and now Goldschmidt? Echeverria. This is amazing. Uh, this, yeah, this is I mean, incredible. This, this streak, you talk about guys having consecutive streaks of, of setting guys down. That's 14 ground ball outs. And I've got, what, 10 in a row? 11. 11? 11 in a row. The last outs, the last 11 outs have been ground ball outs. Oh, I got you. I was going back. You go double play in the second inning. I, I was going back just the hitters he's faced. I yeah, mean, I'm going back just to the outs. Outs, okay. Because he mixed in a walk. I went hitters, you went outs. Yeah. Any way you look at it. Either way, it's pretty good. It's in, it is amazing. <laughs> He's keeping his infield active. Of course, it's an infield and a defense that's the best in the league. And that one is a liner right to Gregorius. There have been some well-hit balls. That one was struck nicely by Dietrich. Here comes Ozuna. So the ground ball streak has been broken on that line drive. But because of all the ground ball outs, just 70 pitches for Cahill, even though he's walked four. And still now he's retired 11 straight. Hey. Ozuna takes a strike. Ozuna singled in the first, bounced into a fielder's choice in the third. One, two. You know, there's some things that you can try to do against a good sinker baller. Rule of thumb, you, you maybe you just don't see it a lot nowadays. Move up in the box a little. And then he snaps off a breaking ball that starts at your shoulder and ends up on the outside black. Hey, he's just locked in right now. Español está disponible por Zap. Six nothing, Arizona on top of Miami. It's the seventh, and let's check in with Cookie and Raúl. Hi guys. What's up, guys? How are you? Hey, Richie. Very Tell me good. How are you guys? Oh, good. Uh, you know what? You, you let us in on a little something, and I want to ask you, how's Levon? You told us Levon was on with you last inning. How's he oh, doing? Oh, yeah, he's doing great. He's actually playing in the uh, amateur golf uh, circuit. Ah. Says he uh, just won a tournament, and if he wins another one, then he qualifies for the national um, 
the open. So he's got a two handicap. Oh. Right? Must be nice, huh? Yeah, but we got to get strokes from him, Cook. He, he, he says that he practiced more of that than anything else. <laughs> he says, yeah, he thinks he's practiced more golf than he actually did baseball when he was here playing. So. Well, he could always hit. Yes, he can. He could always hit. Like this guy. Cookie, what do you think of Paul Goldschmidt? Well, I think that uh, if we can go ahead and trade him, you know, I'll be <laughs> willing to pay my two cents in there to try to bring him in over here. A couple of home runs and now a double for Goldschmidt. He hit two balls out the left, and he takes that one down the right field line. Hey, Cookie, we, we had a discussion. We just started it. We didn't really get to finish it about the approach and maybe some changes hitters can do against a guy like Cahill who's throwing a good sinker ball. Well, number one, Tommy, I would say that he, they have to be patient because he's been behind a lot of hitters at the early in the part of the game. And you have to just, you know, take more pictures, I, I would say. I think that we have, we are, well, what I've seen so far in the last few games, and I don't know if you noticed that or not, we're swinging a lot of our first pitches. We, we, we're seeing, you know, uh, you know, uh, pitchers, you know, to come out and maybe in three, six, eight pitches, to get three outs, and I believe that we're not that type of a hitter. I know that you sometimes has a tough hitter, uh, pitcher on the mound, and you try to get the fastball first and, and go hit. But you got to make him, you got to make him pitch. You got to see what kind of stuff he has, what kind of curveball, what kind of a change up. That's how you learn, I think, to be a better hitter. But if you swing in at the first pitch all the time, in the case of K here with that sinker, he's going to get a lot of ground balls. He's going to get a lot of double plays with minimum bases. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's. Good. Well said. I think we uh, the great a great example of that guys is last night. Um, I think it was like in the eighth inning had less than 80 pitches uh, started for the Reds last night. So we have the block right now working on Eric Chavez with Paul Goldschmidt out at second. Nobody out. Big lead for the Diamondbacks. They jumped the Marlins early with three runs in the first and three more in the third. Tonight a celebration of uh, Cuban baseball. And we looked at some of the greats in in their history, but we saved one especially for right now. Nice. Boy, that's a good looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Huh? Look at that cookie. Now, Cookie, I, here's a question for you. Obviously, times were different when you were able to come from Cuba to play in the major leagues. When you see the, the Cuban players now, the, the Cespedes, the Echeverria, uh, Jose Fernandez, guys that have really had to uh, obviously escape Cuba, put their lives on the line. What's the connection for a, a player like yourself from the, the older generation of Cuban player to the, the younger generation of Cuban player? Well, I think that when you are away from your own country where you were born and you come over here and establish yourself in the sport that you liked and you wanted to be a professional uh, all your life and, and get the opportunity to play, we always feel a lot for those players that stay back, uh, Tommy. The block. And, and the, uh, the the connection is a very good one. You know, when I met Echevarria, when I met Osuna uh, from Dominican Republic, you know, Echevarria, for example, Jose Fernandez, you know, what he did, what he went through in his life, early in his life, to come to the United States, and a lot of those that never made it. Some of them are in the bottom of the ocean between the United States and Cuba. It's something that we feel like if you put yourself in their shoes what they want to do they want to help their family they want to economically have a good life it, it's very important and the, the fact the fact that more of them will try to come back here I think it's great for the game of baseball Cody Ross hits a blast to right center Ozuna's going to run it down he makes the catch but Goldschmidt is going to score Cody's hit two balls a long ways to center and a right center and both have been outs though this one is a sacrifice fly. Cookie, that's uh, very well said. I had a chance to, to be around the Cuban national team over in Japan for two weeks in the World Baseball Classic. There are some terrific players still in Cuba on that national team. That you are. You're not only in the national team. If you go back now to the other teams around the older provinces in Cuba, mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of 15, 16 years old kids with a lot of ability. And guys, one thing that that goes unnoticed sometimes on a, on a national level, some of the players that that are left behind at home because the the government knows that there's a risk that they might defect. So you're seeing a team that sometimes isn't even the full squad. Some of their better players stay behind. 
Yeah, that was a, there was buzz about that in Japan that there were some players on that Cuban team that if they were able to get to San Francisco in the finals might try to bolt. Yep. But they never got there. They were upset by the Netherlands. That's great perspective, Cookie. I, I appreciate yeah, you that's, uh, that's sharing stuff. that. Thank you. And one more thing that I want to say that is uh, congratulations to all of those Cuban players that are here right now: Tony Taylor, Ivan Hernandez, uh, Tani Perez, the Senor Felo Ramirez, which is in the Hall of Fame, and he. Yeah, he's a great history in the game of baseball. To all of them, my very best. Thank you for being here. All right. Good stuff, guys. All Have right, fun guys. the rest of the way. Ball in the air. Same to you. And este batazo ahora le va. Pierre is there, and he makes a catch. When we get back, Jose Fernandez mic'd up. You don't want to miss it. Heritage night. Jose Fernandez mic'd up during batting practice. Yeah, this is this is all great, man. This is amazing. And uh, after you know, after a lot of things I've been through to come to the United States first, and uh, you know, now being here and uh, meeting Miami with uh, you know everything going on, and uh, that's just it's just it makes it even better. It makes it even better than what it should be. I think back now and then and, you know, coming here and uh, leaving my mom, leaving, you know, leaving my grandma back there, there's like my mom. It's tough to steal. It still gets to me, but not much. Uh, she knows that I'm giving 100% and uh, I'm trying to get her over here. And uh, she knows I love her with my heart and it's everything, so she's, she knows that. and. Uh, I miss her a lot. Every day, so. And I hope that she is watching. I hope somehow she is. One thing I found out, Tommy, in Japan, being around the Cuban national team, is they follow Major League Baseball. The Cuban season is runs from September through April. So they play during the winter and in the summer, Obviously, with the, the heat, the professional league in, in Cuba is down, but those players, the coaches, the, they watch Major League Baseball. They watch on the, the dish. They watch over the Internet. Greg Dobbs singles to right. They well, know the players. They know the teams. You can hear the emotion in the words of Jose Fernandez. Masano Polanco now. Bottom seven, it's been a ball game that uh, Paul Goldschmidt took over early with a pair of two-run homers. And Trevor Cahill 
with an immense amount of crown balls has kept Miami off the board. How about 23 of 25 first pitch strikes? Cahill misses in with a fastball. John Rausch in the bullpen. The Astros in the bottom of the sixth lead the Pirates four to two. That game is in Pittsburgh. Pirates have uh, run their record to 24 and 17. Houston opens play with an identical record to the Marlins at 11 and 30. The Phillies have a 3-2 lead over the Reds. In the seventh. That's in Philly. Polanco with a base hit to center. So a couple hits here in the seventh. It's a family Sunday. This Sunday, the Diamondbacks and the Marlins at 110. You can get the Pepsi 4 for 54 pack. Four tickets for KMB Franks. Four Pepsis for just $54. All fans get a Marlins drawstring bag courtesy of the MLB Network, and kids can run the bases after the game in the Diamond Dash. Marlins.com for more information. Jason Hayward is back with the Braves, and Atlanta is at home but trailing the Dodgers 3 to 2 in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, Hayward on the disabled list. Uh, had an appendectomy. Brantley pulls one foul. Chris Coughlin on deck. Andy Pettit landed on the disabled list. Yeah, his back uh, acted up in the game last night. Cahill's had a couple of other starts this year. Seven and a third innings, seven innings in Colorado, eight innings against the Giants. So he's taken a few games into this territory a few times this year. Up the middle into center field. That's a base hit. And it's going to produce a run. So Miami is finally on the board. Dobbs will score. Brantley with a single. Three hits in a row. That should get the Diamondbacks bullpen uh, story. Now you got Coughlin coming up. And it's amazing. All of a sudden you have balls that if they were at guys would be double plays. All of a sudden some balls hit hard or finding holes. And the Marlins have put together three consecutive hits. Runners at the corners, one out. Hoglin a ground ball. Goldschmidt, there's one. Gregorius, there's two. Another double play. That's the third double play the Marlins have rolled into. They get a run, and that's it. Out of the seventh.
Yeah, we're going to show you a little long ball. Paul Goldsmith, the first inning, his 11th home run of the year on a hanging breaking ball, drove in another, so two RBIs on that. How about Eric Chavez back to back in that first inning, his fifth home run of the season? Well, Goldsmith again gets a pitch about belt high. Another man on base, so two two run homers. He's also double in this game, been a big night for the Diamondbacks first baseman Paul Goldschmidt just to give you an idea of what the top of the order has done for Arizona the Diamondbacks one through four hitters have gone 10 for 16 with three home runs tonight there's a former Diamondback parts of 08 parts of 09 John Roush and one of his teammates in the bullpen during that time Chad Qualls Roush will get Martin Prado, A.J. Pollock, and then the pitcher spot. <laughs> you hear that? You see how baseball is? Prado, I'm sure, talking about all the line drives he's been hitting at people and tonight they've started to fall in he's at three liners line to right for an out and then an RBI single in the third another single in the fifth both liners well we told you at the beginning of the game he came in with a lifetime average against the Marlins at 316 so that's gone up in 76 now career games against the Marlins some of those hits really hurt at times he gets some big hits when he was a brave. He was the guy they always seemed to be at the plate when the Marlins had the infield drawn in in a tie game either in extra innings or the ninth. It was either he or Omar and Fante and they would always line up a single to left and the game would be over. Last year Prado ended up all over the place he was in left field played third base played short played second he even played first. And guess what? <laughs> they are starting to fall for Prado. Well, it's it's really incredible. It's this game is so streaky. But when you have a guy who's a 295 lifetime hitter for as long as he's done it, you know that sooner or later, if he's hitting in the 230s, it, it's going to get up there. And it looks like it's starting to happen for Prado. Got a nice new four year contract too with the Diamondbacks. Now AJ Pollock against Roush. In the air to right, Ozuna. And he makes the catch. So tomorrow night, the Marlins and the Diamondbacks. We talked about Brandon McCarthy, who was an athletic last year. Of course, he was the pitcher who got hit in that head by a line drive and have emergency surgery. Thankfully, he is back in the game, pitching for Arizona. Tom Kohler makes his second start of the season. Boy, Cahill getting his fourth at bat in this one. It's funny how it works because Cahill gave up the three consecutive hits. There was some activity in the bullpen. Guys started to scurry around, and before anyone could throw a ball, he had another double play ball and was on his way to the dugout, and everybody sat down. Yeah, Arizona's turned three double plays tonight. And you count those as ground ball outs, 16 ground ball outs. So he's one better than uh, Matt Latos, right? Latos was 15 last night. Dobbs.
Toyota Trend, Kirk Gibson, and the Snakes, 11 and 7 on the road. Only team in the National League West with a winning road record. Another game in the West with the uh, Giants, who are a game up over the Diamondbacks, taking on the Rockies tonight. The Giants have a 4 0 lead. They had a crazy game last night. I mean, Matt Kane picked up the win for the Giants last night, and not too often does Matt Kane give up six runs. But he went six in the third innings, and the Giants beat the Rockies eight to six. Gerardo Parra fouls it back to the screen. Three hits for Parra. Arizona's banged out 13 hits in this one. Yeah, Arizona goes on and wins this game. They'll, they'll go to 12 and 7 on the road. Part of that's because we pointed out early in the game the uh, tremendous numbers Goldschmidt has on the road. Our poll question brought to you by AT&T Uverse. Your favorite sandwich. The uh, media noche in a landslide. Now the media noche. See a, a little sweeter bread. I, 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 I like I would go Cuban. It's the midnight sandwich. Yeah. It originated in the islands of, of Cuba and Puerto Rico. It's a staple served in Havana's nightclubs right around or after midnight. Final results in Marlins line. 7 1 right now is the result on the field. on Cuban Heritage Night. Tonight's cold hard fact brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light. Arizona leads the all-time series 62-47 and are over 500 here in South Florida. And Trevor Cahill has been a ground ball machine tonight. Goes to work. And he's got Juan Pierre. Lines one to left. Ross is there. Cody makes the catch. Cody got a nice three year contract coming over a three year twenty six million dollar contract. He gets to play at home. He makes his offseason home in the Phoenix area. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a sweet deal for uh, Cody Ross and his family. A 
Danny Echevarria. With all the ground ball outs, Rich, that's the uh, first outfield put out. And the ball hit to Cody Ross. Cholula hot sauce spotlight player. Now leading the National League in triples. He only had 18 in 340 games in the minor leagues. So off to a great start as far as triples go. Very good year defensively as well. Chavez still has it at third base. He's made some nice plays. That rather routine, but we've seen him moving around like he used to wearing the uh, the green and gold of the Oakland Athletics. If you notice the last couple of innings too for Cahill, he's used his curveball a little bit more. Still using the uh, two seamer. 17 ground ball outs now. Dietrich hit a ball right on the nose last time up. Line drive to shortstop. Hits that one hard, but on the ground. And Prado flips the first. Eight pitch inning. Cahill has been brilliant tonight. From Cubic Heritage Night. All the great Cuban players that are here. Yvonne Hernandez, Tony Taylor, of course, Tony Perez. Tommy Hutton sported a hat like that last year for the fantasy auction. I've got it. I've got it ready to go this year, Rich. 7 1, Arizona on top of Miami. All Diamondbacks, all the time. Paul Goldschmidt lighting up. Uh, Kevin Slowey to begin this night with two two run homers. D.D. Gregorius. Goldschmidt. Right behind him. And then Eric Chavez, who's also homered, he has three hits. John Roush into his second inning in relief. Diamondbacks here in Miami. It's, it's an interesting trip for the Diamondbacks who were at home playing Atlanta on Wednesday. They were able to get here, had an off day. In fact, they left early enough to get everybody out here, get to the beach. So three games in Miami, and then 
they'll fly to Denver of all places to Colorado and hop right back into the National League West. That pitch up and Gregorius trots down to first AT&T U verse rewind back to 97 Yvonne Hernandez the Marlins are in the win column they have taken game five Yvonne Hernandez with the game of 15 strikeouts and of course Eric Gregg behind the plate that was way before Fox tracks or pitch quest or any uh, measuring but the, you know the one thing you have to point out in that game as people say well Hernandez exploited the strike zone he stretched the strike zone Eric Gregg had a huge strike zone his opponent that night was Greg Maddox who, <laughs> who did it better than anybody in his career he knew how to expand and I'll tell you what Levon Hernandez had quite a career nine different ball clubs he won 178 games Wow, how about this guy? Goldschmidt again to right field. Four hits for Goldschmidt. He's having a, a Shin Su Chu like night. Chu had a similar night the other night where he had four hits, including two homers. Well, Goldschmidt has four hits. Both of his homers were two run shots. That was a pretty good pitch by John Rowe. Down, away. The other thing, Rich, Levon Hernandez had 50 complete games. Yeah, it's just a good pitch and a good swing. Levo had about uh, nine or ten years of 200 innings or more. And here go the Diamondbacks again. Eric Chavez has got four hits now with an RBI single. And so it's 8 1 now. Still nobody out. Here's Cody Ross. The next road trip that the Diamondbacks have is a is a really unique one. As they're headed, I'm saying they're going from Miami to Colorado, then they go home and they take on San Diego for three. They're back out on the road for just two games in Texas. And then on to Chicago and St. Louis. But the story there is the Monday before they leave on that trip, they're playing a doubleheader. On Monday the 27th, it's a scheduled doubleheader against Texas. So Texas is in town for just one day and two games. It's a 12 40 and a 6 40 start. Cliff Pennington is the pinch runner for the Diamondbacks. Talking about the uh, split doubleheader the Marlins played in in Arizona last year. That was a scheduling situation with the uh, with the Diamondbacks where they couldn't play uh, so many games in, in a row. They took the uh, uh, the next day was off. The, the Marlins had a split doubleheader. I think we televised the nightcap. I don't believe we televised the day game. Cody Ross is up. And a breaking ball flip foul and out of play. But the Diamondbacks, you know, get everybody healthy. They get Aaron Hill back in there with his power. Of course, that's the nice thing about having Prado is you can plug Prado in wherever he's needed as you point out you got to give Eric Chavez multiple days off each week just so to you, make sure that he's you get Prado over there yep. if uh, you want to you want to spell Cody Ross a little bit you you can put Prado in left field you can put Prado at second base as he is tonight
Reds have come back to tie the Phillies 3 3 bottom eight. Ross fouls it back. You talk about Cody Ross getting hot and we were documenting his postseason in 2010. That was one of those streaks of where we saw in the five years uh, of Cody get into those. Remember the the road trip he had in the series he had in Colorado. Yeah, I believe had four consecutive three hit games. I believe he, he drove in 14 runs. Yeah, yeah. His brother's band was playing as well. That was <laughs> that added to the whole mystique. Ross sends that one into left field and that's going to score another run. Goldschmidt hustling around third. Big man can run two. And so Cody Ross has his second RBI and it's a single and it's 9 1 Arizona. MLB.com at bat, the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers Marlins baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or go to Marlins.com for details. John Roush is coming out, and the Marlins are headed to the bullpen. Tough night for Roush as Arizona leads Miami 9 1. Ryan Webb's coming in. Marlins have just a single run and only five hits. And a power show by the Diamondbacks, Paul Goldschmidt. He's got four hits, two homers, a double, a single. Eric Chavez has got four hits, including a homer and two RBIs. One of those top four hitters, Rich, 12 for 19 in that uh, Diamondbacks order. Ryan Webb's got a nice little stretch going. Did give up a base hit in his last outing, but has a string of 14 and a third consecutive scoreless innings. Here's Montero. There's still nobody out here in the ninth. First pitch foul back. One of the things Ryan's been talking about to help him with this success, he's been trying to stay aggressive and just stay aggressive down in the zone with that heavy sink. Braves have come back on a grand slam by former Diamondback Justin Upton, his 14th homer. We had such a run of solo shots, so all of a sudden a grand slam. 6 4 Atlanta over the Dodgers, bottom of the sixth. Rocky fans are uh, mindful of the Giants and the Rockies. The Giants at 24 and 17. The Diamondbacks a game behind. San Francisco in Colorado. It's early, but it's 4 1. 
San Francisco. Yeah, when when you give a score of a of a game in Denver, it's like a first quarter score of an NBA game. <laughs> Will Harris in the Arizona bullpen. This one got away from Miami early. Nationals are still out on the West Coast. San Diego and Washington begin in about 20 minutes. Echeverria, Dietrich, quick turn, and he gets the out. Miami gets a double play. That's a nice double play combination to watch. They have worked really well together. And we've had an opportunity to see the, the throwing arm of Derek Dietrich. And we've talked about the, the kid who played more games at shortstop in the minor leagues than second base. He played a lot of games in second. He gives you that shortstop arm. It's strong. Conversation with the Perry Hill yesterday about Dietrich and what he has seen not only in spring training but his first week in the big leagues. And Hill really likes him at second base. He can play all three spots. He was a shortstop in college. He's played some third. But Perry Hill looks at him at second and, and the guy that he compares him to right away is Chase Utley. He said you know Utley looks a little stiff. But Utley is a terrific defender. He's always one of those guys that with range factor and, and many of the metrics grades out well. And Dietrich Perry Hill feels can be a very good second baseman. That one flipped foul and out of play. Talking to a scout tonight before the game. And we were making comparisons and I hadn't heard this but then I added to the scout. But he's going to be a much better second baseman. Than Daniel Murphy. The Mets but uh, very similar. Uh, swing wise can hit the ball that way Murphy a terrific hitter. Polanco. On the first. And. Ryan Webb comes in and restores order, but the Diamondbacks keep more runs on the pile. It's 9-1. No, I think years ago in Hawaii, when you went to the coast, when you went over to Hawaii when they were in the coast, league. yeah, you had uh, had some pineapples on it. Just getting off the outrigger canoe. Don't be late for the luau. Cliff Pennington stays in the ball game. Pennington 
is out at second base. You saw Prado at third. So Chavez is out. And Will Harris into the ball game. Ozuna takes outside. Marcelo Ozuna, Justin Ruggiano, and Greg Dobbs. Trevor Cahill was magnificent tonight. Eight innings, five hits, a run, four walks, four strikeouts. 18 ground ball outs. Harris, a little different type pitcher. More of a fastball curveball, not the ground ball type. Ozuna high pop up. Goldschmidt. And there's an out here in the ninth. Marlins live coming up. Craig Minervini and Jeff Conine will break this one down. Ground ball out by ground ball out because that's what uh, Trevor Cahill did so well. Now. In the official box that's on MLB.com, they've got Cahill with 15 ground ball outs. They they must not count the double plays. I'm with you on that. I think I think you should get two ground ball outs for a they, double play. You got two outs on a ground ball, but uh, that's probably why they have 15 because Man. there were three double plays turned. Ruggiano can't hold up on a ball in the dirt and he swings and misses it's one and two. So Kirk Gibson is hoping Harris can finish it. Gregorius keeps his feet. And finds his target. He hasn't made uh, any spectacular plays, but he's made all the routine ones quite well. And you know what? That's all you want from any shortstop, and that's what we've seen from Echeverria as well. So this will be a fun series. These two young shortstops picking it out there. Now Dobbs, who was two for three. This will be Miami's sixth consecutive loss. And with Houston leading right now, Houston has a 4 2 lead over Pittsburgh. If the Astros were to win, they would actually have a, a 12 and 30 record. And the Marlins would be 11 and 31. The Diamondbacks would keep, keep on rolling here. Would push their record to 24 and 18. Well, if this score holds up too, we, we talk about this number. It'll be the 26th game. Into right, and it's going to find a home, and into the corner. Greg Dobbs on into second. Dobbs has got three hits tonight. Well, Greg Dobbs has done his part, and all of a sudden you can just see his swing much better. Than when the club was on the West Coast. And I know he didn't have uh, great numbers on the West Coast, but it always seems anytime Dobbs goes home to the West Coast, goes through there, all of a sudden the, uh, the swing gets ironed out. And he has started to go back to spraying line drives. To finish my thought, if the Marlins don't score more than two, it'll be the 26th game that they have a game where they've scored two or less. Polanco. You know, sometimes you connect with somebody when you're in a certain area, and Greg Dobbs from the West Coast. Then you're not referencing in and out burgers either. 
Not referencing the burgers, no. Because you and I both have a connection, a, a deep, heart, yeah. heartfelt connection there. See, that would be, I mean, forget about all these other social media polls. That would be the ultimate. Which do you prefer, In-N-Out Burger? In-N-Out, Shake, Shake Shack, Shack, or you could throw in five, five, guys. five guys, maybe. Polanco kick save into beauty, and it rolls in the left field. Miami's going to get a run out of it. Second straight in for Polanco, and it's 9-2. It looked like Harris tried to get a piece of it, and he did. And Gregorius was headed over the middle. I don't know if Gregorius would have been able to get the ball. Let's see where this ball caught him. Somewhere on the on the right leg, and it deflected it in the opposite direction that Gregorius was going. Watch Gregorius going up the middle. That was going into center field. Yeah, that would have been a base hit. Either way, a couple of good swings, last two ABs for Polanco. Here's Brantley now. And he pulls one foul. So the veteran hitter is doing a better job tonight. Number one against Cahill and now against Harris. Dobbs with three hits and Polanco with two. Brantley had that pitch hit his hand. Counts 0 and 2. Well, Brantley with an RBI base hit in the seventh inning. But of course, by rule, you you swing at a ball, it can hit you in the side or the leg or wherever, and it's still a strike. And he strikes out. Harris with a breaking ball. And the Arizona Diamondbacks have come into Miami and pounded the Marlins tonight. Nine to two, 16 hits. And of course, the three home runs right out of the chute. Two by Paul Goldschmidt, one by Eric Chavez. And that was all that Trevor Cahill needed. Cahill with eight dominant innings and a 9 2 Arizona win.